Good afternoon, guys. This is Bro, Barkley Row with uh, Bro's Garage. I fix and stuff. Um, this is uh, the episode on Thursdays that I always do Thursdays with Uncle Joe and the B61 Mac. Uh, if, if you haven't been following along, uh, I give you a little heads up on Thursdays. I drive over to my uncle's. He's got a B61 Mac. And uh, hasn't run in years. We finally got it started. You have to go back and rewatch some of the videos. It's pretty cool. And I uh, apologize for my movies or show, my, my filming quality. I'm working on it. I know some of you guys are already commenting on it being in landscape, and I'm working on it. So I even bought one of them newfangled sticks, you know, selfie sticks and tripods. So I'm working on also a microphone. So I've got one coming. But today, um, we're not going to do a whole lot of work, but we're going to see what he did with the, uh, the injector pump over the week. And we're going to spend a lot of time just moving stuff inside the building because we want to, we got to make room for the roll-up door guy to come in and put a new roll-up door in. It's starting to get hot here inside that building, a little oven. So, to catch you up, I also uh, have a storage issue on my phone and, uh, Made a mistake, deleted a whole video. So I'm gonna have to kind of give you a headlight, head, heads up of what we did um, in the past episode that you're not gonna get to see, sorry. Yeah, it's kind of disheartening. So for those of you that knew that the garage was completely full, we spent the last episode, well, most of the first episode, the, most of the last episode, moving a, a tractor and getting room. But what really surprised you, if you've seen the episode, the garage was, you know, a little pass back there to it. And we've been working on it through those paths. Now it's wide open space. And, uh, you know, optimistically, we've opened up, a, Uncle Joe has done it. He's opened up a pretty good path to come out. Uh, although the pump's in a million pieces right now. And I'm 100% confident that he knows how it goes back together and he can fix it if anybody can. So, um, and if not, we've actually found a couple on a shelf. They're really kind of odd pumps. We found a couple of them in uh, yeah, about 90 miles from here. Um, 700 bucks each. Uh, yeah, well, we, we're going to try to stay away from that. But if we have to, we have to because they have to be actually set for the horsepower of the truck. And the company that has it, is an injector company, but he says he's been there almost 30 years and never seen anybody touch those pumps on the shelf. So he doesn't even know if anybody knows anything about those pumps. So Uncle Joe, he's pretty sharp. He'll fix it out, he'll figure it out. So I'm gonna give you a little tour of what happened that you should have seen on the last episode. And then Joe's gonna sit down and then he's sitting in his chair looking at that pump and he's gonna explain it looks like the pump had a bomb in it. I mean, there's little parts everywhere. So, I'm still confident Uncle Joe can get it together. So, we'll just have to see. Uh, I don't want to hold him. I don't want to put too much pressure on him because there's a lot of little parts there. But he took it apart and he's pretty confident. So, I'm going to turn the phone around and uh, show you what we did. Kind of give you a little walk through what we have done that you missed. That dummy me forgotten i thought it i mean i don't, I don't know I, my, I was trying to make storage and i thought i deleted a video that i'd already posted uh yeah well mistakes happen so here we go i'm gonna turn you around and we're gonna see a clean shot which is rare not a clean shot but the area is kind of clean so here we go all right guys we're gonna see go in the shop and uh well, you need the big D21 is outside. Um, kind of missed that, and I really am sad. The, um, the old pumper pumper didn't want to pump. And uh, we had uh, we had cans on it. We we were bottle feeding it because that tank has, uh, we put the, we just kind of stuck the seat back on. You see that boatless. Um, it's got a leak, and he had it unhooked, so he's like, okay. Went down here, he rebuilt the pump, the hand pump. Um, we put a bottle feed here 
and pumped it up and it still it would try to run but the pump something's wrong and it was leaking like a sea of right here so we think we might have getting there so we pulled the battery back off well there's a battery on that side we pulled the battery out and yeah i took the uh, all i could afford forward put a chain to it pulled it out then uh no more pass just open space and a four-wheeler it's got a flat tire he's been out spraying and uh we're gonna get one of those and put in that forklift back there because we got to get that stuff out in the bed of the truck that may go on the all i can afford forward because it's in really good shape and then we're going to take that and pull it forward kind of over in this area so make room back here so they can take that door down and put a new door up um and you notice the grill is off that was the reason we pulled the uh, d21 because we had a little bobcat we brought in here and used the chain and picked that thing off so you guys miss me fighting that bolt right there this one came right out that one was terrible i mean it was bad and then we pulled the pump we had to pull the radiator to get this cover off to pull the gear and the weirdest thing the center of the shaft is well we're here and a coupling kept smacking and you had to take the gear off you couldn't just take the gear off of that taper in anyway so we've got the pump completely off and uh we did uh during that episode that i lost we put a fitting on the air and we checked the brake chambers um and then neither one of the front ones worked but we've got three in the back uh that work i think passenger side front and rear and driver's side rear but that one's unhooked um but yeah so we know we got some brake, but these are not the uh, spring-loaded types. So if you lose air, uh, they don't automatically engage. They're just some little kink. We're, if anybody's got any technology to change those to spring-loaded, um, please share. Or some, some people are sending me messages, messaging me on Facebook or Instagram or something, uh, or leave a comment what, maybe a picture or something what you guys have done or what we can do and uh but yeah we we're still like like before we're we're trying to uh get all this stuff back where that guy can get up here and put the door on uh probably be moving that today if we can get uh <laughs> i mean you call it a will it start video uh it's got fishing it's a fishing pot, pole holder now but we're gonna to try to get that going and get that out and turn it around and come back and get this or just get this out and get the bobcat in here and get this out and then we'll probably get this pulled forward because it's it's not like we're gonna we're probably not gonna be working on the truck much today other than just kind of getting it positioned up here to closer uh into the open but yeah open space all right and here's joe Uncle Joe is hey, hey. Hey, say hey to everybody. Um yeah. Alright, so all the little pieces and parts. Uh, that's usually that's pretty much external stuff. This is your pump. That's your uh, pickup pump. And these are, yeah, a lot of stuff that's going on here. Maybe some thin paper gaskets that we need to get. Mm -hmm. You got governors and you got housings. All right, so I'll right, give it back to Uncle Joe and he's going to kind of explain what's going on here. Maybe you guys can see. All right, take it away, Uncle Joe. Okay. Well, as you can see, I've got it all disassembled. <clears throat> and uh, I really can't say that I've, I've found anything in here that I think that is was the root of the problem. Uh, the plunger had some uh, corrosion on it, if you would call it that. 
maybe like it's um, water staining down in here. It actually uh, would stick when you get to a certain point. It still does. I'm gonna take some acetone and clean it. It gets up to a certain point right there and then it sticks. Of course, this, this has a spring on it. This is running on a cam. All this is not here. This little button goes in here, but this basically goes in here like that. And the cam in there is lifting this plunger. So that's a roller cam. That's a roller. That's a roller, right. roller bearing, just like your, well, it's not really like your car, but it's a lot like it. It's got a little half bearing in it. Um, that's that, and then here's your cam. That's called the Intravance, Intravance by Max Terminology. But that has your cam on it. The, this has to turn, uh, make two revolutions in order for each cylinder uh, to get one injection in one cycle. In other words, this is turning. This is going up and down off of the cam. And that's what's compressing and not really compressing. You can't compress a liquid, but this is what builds up pressure. Once this gets past the port closing, you have fuel all around this. Inside of this housing right here. And fuel's going in here through these holes, through ports that are drilled in here. This is, this is turning, also going up and down. This little notch right here, that's a distributor. That is like, saying uh, this is the rotor button on a distributor. As it's turning, it's delivering fuel to each of these. And now, uh, this sleeve, this is a metering sleeve. And that's how it meters the fuel. I'm gonna take some acetone and clean that too because it's a little stiff on there. This is going up and down. This is the control unit that fits in here. And that's controlling that sleeve. When the control rod right here that the governor operates and the throttle operates. When it pushes this, this in this direction, it opens the throttle, which by moving it counterclockwise, it lifts this up and down. It's kind of, it's off to one side. Mm-hmm. Okay, this, this is going up and down the throttle, it's determining how much time this compresses fuel. When it cover gets up here to where it's covering that hole, it's compressing because there's a hole down through the center and it's ported back to these two openings and these two openings. And there, this one right here is the, is the spill sump. When you shut the engine off, you pull back, the rod comes back. Put this back up here again. The rod comes back and turns in this direction. It pushes this down. It can't compress fuel up here because it's, this is open 
and the fuel goes right back down through this hole and out right here. So that's why it stops when you shut it off. When this drops. Now, right here, is, is, this is determining how long, how long of a, from port closing, there's a port, where's my little pointer at? I got to have a pointer, not very good. Yeah, this right here determines as long as it's covering this hole right here, you got the throttle opened up and this is pushed up over that hole. This determines how long it's going to compress that, <coughs> excuse me, from port closing. There's a port inside here. The fuel comes in and this comes up. Once it passes that port, then that's port closing. This only comes up a few, just a few thousands of lift to port closing. Once it's up here, then it starts trying to compress the, the fuel in there. Once the pressure is reached, uh, the spring on the delivery valve, the delivery valve is sitting up here above it. And here's the, this is the delivery valve assembly. It sits up here on top of it. Put this down, get this in here. This little spring guide sits on top of that. And then you got a spring that sits on it. Ah, knocked it out. Come here. Get this back on here. Okay, the spring sits on here like this. Now all this is sitting in under this. Like this. And that's holding this diverter valve assembly in place. It comes down on this, then it seals right here. Once this pressure builds to what this spring pressure will let it develop, the, de the, de the delivery valve will pop open. It'll lift and fuel will come out around this. Up into the, up into here and around and back down. And there's a hole right in here where that fuel goes. into this groove right here. Now, like I say, it's turning and it's lifting. When this distributor notch right here gets lined up with the, uh, whichever injector on whatever cylinder, it will e inject the fuel out these outlets to the injector. That pressure has to open the spring pressure on the injector for it to spray. I think it's around 2,500, 2,000, 2,500, somewhere in that range. I'm not real certain on that figure, but it's up in there in that, somewhere in that range to what it takes to make the injector open. This is a, this, oh man, I lost it. This is sitting on here like this. And uh, drop in there. It's got a key. Yep, I know I'm trying to get it, find it. There, there we go. But see, it's got a little bit of, I don't really understand that. 
you have to get the, it has to, it's going to, this is going to turn, this gear is going to turn this piece here off of one of these gears here. This one right here? Mm -hmm. Now the intravance runs off of one of these. Oh, this see. one runs like that. The intravance sits under here. This one's running off of that one, and the intravance runs off that one like that. All this has to be timed, and there's a way to time it. Right here is your timing, timing notch on this gear. That's done through, I have to turn it around, I think. Yeah. That's the timing port. And this is the timing pin. Ordinarily, this is in here like that. It's threaded in. But once you put this assembly, the head assembly back in there, you turn this around and put it in there like that, and you feel for this right here. And that times... When you slide it all together, that timing mark right there lines up. Uh, there's an odd tooth on here. I have to get it where I can find it here. It kind of needs to be wiped off. I've got so much oil on it, I can't. I can't see it. bevel tooth right there. That has to be in the 12 o'clock position. See it's beveled on the corner? Mm-hmm. Okay. And you put the governor housing and assembly back to the pump housing. Oh, that's awesome. That, with that in there, and you pin this with the timing pin, you push this in and those will engage one another. Right like that. The intravance, <clears throat> Cam sleeve, this hole here in the cam sleeve has to line up with the uh, key slot in the shaft when it's in the 12 o'clock position, when it's up. It doesn't, it doesn't line up perfectly, but that's as close as you can get it. If I pull it off and reset it, it's way over here, or it's back over here. So. That is, that's timed to this. So this actually moves back and forth. Yeah, this moves back and forth. This, this is a follower rod right here. And this has a governor on it also. And oil pressure, oil pressure from the engine in this housing is what makes this thing work after a certain RPM. Anyway, this is the bearing for it. It goes on here like this. It's a snug fit, you kinda have to work with it and then it'll go. That's basically that. Now, Right here is the timing mark on the intravance. That little dot right there on that tooth. Mm -hmm. Right here. I don't know if you can see it or mm -hmm. not. Okay. That one, um, that's put in with this at the top, the flat part goes to the top side. That's all timed. And when you slide all this together, you line up that mark, 
you put this mark right here on your timing pin right here it sits in here like this I don't have to turn it back no I've got the right side up where that timing pin can feel for this right here it's got a little I don't know 45 degree bevel on it but that goes right in there and you can when this gear is in place you, you just push them together um, right here the bevel one I can't I've lost track of where the which one went where at the top or the bottom let's see this one, the intervance is on the bottom side. So it goes on the, that one goes on to the, it goes on to the larger one. <clears throat> Get this thing off, it's getting in my way. This one goes on there like that. This one times to that one. This one right here goes in at the 12 o'clock position on here. If you have the bevel tooth and this in there, with this lined up with the timing pin hole and the bevel gear at 12 o'clock and with the, this shaft in the 12 o'clock position, the, the key way. These go together like that. And that's kind of how it works. So this thing's turning the... It's turning it. Turning that, this, this thing. Turning this right here. No, that's not turning. This oh, is turning I mean, the yeah. Out of it. That's, and that's all that tells, the, as that thing comes around, that's all that tells. Actually, it goes upside down. Uh, that's all it tells every time it comes by that little slot. It yeah, tells, fuel is coming in this notch right here. Yeah, and it's going up and down. It's too. going up and down. There so is, there's it's here, a, it's here, it's here, it's here. It just keeps going around yeah. that head. This has to rotate because the lobe has the lobes on the cam. There's six lobes, but there's there's three lobes, but there's six cylinders mm -hmm. six injectors so this has to turn well i don't know what he wanted mm. anyway this it has to make two revolutions for all of the cylinders to fire for each one to get one shot of fuel through the injectors And that's basically kind of how it works. Uh, like I say, I polished on this, but no, I didn't use anything that was really abrasive on it. I used a real fine polishing paste and got rid of the watermarks on it. Well, it kind of, I don't know why, but just looking at the steel, it looks hardened. Looks yeah. like... Uh, a 4140 or, or better. It's a little bit harder metal. I don't know what it's made of, but it's uh, it, it's a precision made piece. There is just absolutely no no clearance. There is just as smooth as glass. And when you go to, if you try to sit, move it side to side, it, there's no movement. I'm moving the whole thing, but you can't feel anything. It's there's nothing there. Watchmaker type yeah. precision. Yeah. It has to have that in order to, to apply pressure. If it if it had any. Well, it don't have it don't have O rings. It don't have uh, no. rings. It don't it's have metal nothing. To, metal to metal. It's just solid piston inside of a cylinder. So it's got to be real real tight tolerance. Same way same way with a metering sleeve. It's the, these are a match set from the factory. That cannot have. I imagine it's in the 
it's it's probably less than one one ten thousandths of clearance. It, it may go a little higher than that. I mean, You're saying it's probably that. precision ground, but that has to cover that port in order to build pressure up here. If this is not covered, the the fuel when it, once it this goes up past port closing and your your fuel has no outlet to escape but yeah. to push against a spring on a diverter valve and make that diverter valve lift, it has to try to compress this diesel fuel up here. If this is down in in the shutoff position, the fuel won't compress. It'll just, it'll come in here, it'll cl port close, and if this is down, the fuel just shoots down through the center and comes out this hole right here That's, on each side. That thing is about like sticking your finger over the end of a water hose. You start building pressure. If you held it like that. Yeah. You it, couldn't hold it to the yeah. pressure, but it's the same principle. Same principle as sticking your hand over a water hose and building some, you know, yeah. building some heavy pressure. And then uh, as you as you, as that goes down, it's like taking your finger off of a water hose. And it's 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 not going to pressurize up. It's not going to make the spring on the injector. It's, you know. Yeah. And when it, when you get uh, when you get everything assembled and the the pump timed inside internally, the intervance and the, the plunger, uh, this gear, everything's timed back up right. You you can go through though. I think we covered it a little bit earlier. You can go what, through what's called uh, the spill timing. You can just hook the canister of diesel fuel up here, take the diverter valve out of here, and screw the, this spring and or the diverter valve assembly nut back on. And then you screw the cap nut back on it. That seals this area off. You hook a line to, let's see which one, this one here is number one. And it's turning this way. You hook a line to this, and you just hang a um, container up here with fuel in it. And you come down and come into here. You plug one side and you come in and, and with your fuel line to here. And that'll fill all this cavity right here with diesel fuel. You turn your, you bar the engine over until fluid stops coming out of this port down to maybe one drop every five to 10 seconds. And that's port closing on it. At that so point, basically that's your thumb going over the end of the water hose starting to build pressure. That's just starting to build pressure at that point. And your flywheel timing on the engine should be at 28 de degrees before top dead center. And there's marks on the flywheel that shows that. Also, when you get it at 28 degrees before top dead center, there is a mark on here. Uh, if I can find it. I think I felt it. There it is right there. This goes on here. And that's the one that I was kind of explaining earlier that was hanging going through the housing because it's offset. And we didn't know. Yeah. We didn't know that you had to take the, this is right in here the like gear this. off. Put that upside down. Let me turn it around where it shows it better. This intervance is, is put in from this side, and this shaft comes through. This tapered hub or adapter, whatever you want to call it, is on here. And when you get it at 28 
degrees before top dead center on the flywheel marks. This mark on here, right here, will line up with this pointer. And there is a plate that goes on here and it has a, a cap that can be unscrewed or plug can be unscrewed here where you can visual, visually look down through here and see if these two are in line. And the, if you need a little bit of adjustment, there's the gear that drives this pump, there are four, three bolts in it. You can loosen those bolts and the holes in the gear are slotted where you can turn them, turn these just a little bit to fine tune this piece right here with that pointer. That's a, that's a layman's explanation for how this thing works. Not claiming to be an expert about it because this is the first one of these kind of pumps I've ever torn down. And all I've gone by is what I got off the internet uh, that I downloaded. And finally, somewhat figured out how the thing is supposed to work. And uh, I'm, I'm dead certain that I haven't got it all figured out yet, and I know I haven't. But I know a little more about it than I did when I started. Okay, you said something earlier about the oil pressure advancing the timing. Yeah. Well, that's one thing I don't know if I can explain. Well, here's right the, here's here. my question. Do you yes. think that that could have been some of the problem in the very beginning? Well, it could be, but I don't <laughs> think uh, the engine just stops. Like it's the fuel is shut off now. If it, if the if this weren't advancing, here's how it advances. This all goes into here and there's a follower rod on the end of this right here. These weights come out, which when they come out, see how these are t tapered? I mean, not tapered, but they're at all twisted. on a diagonal. Yeah, they're on a di They're not straight on. They kind of no. twist like a helix. Yeah. So well, that, that, adv that advances the timing forward and backwards. Right. Because that moves the lobe on the cam doing that, this yeah. way or this way depending on which way it is yeah. here so it's like a, a nut you know it's it, except not so close threads yeah and oil pressure on that I think they call it the follower rod it goes in through these holes here no I take that back it doesn't go through these holes it goes, it gets to there. There's a hole here. Where are you at? Well, it would be right here. It goes, goes in right here. It goes behind the follower rod. Now it's blocked off till the engine gets to a certain RPM. This won't let it advance. And once you reach that that RPM or that or that load, I should say, then this the, this will allow this follower rod to advance the advance injection on it. That's not a very good explanation, but that's kind of the best of way I can so explain it. So, basically, before the oil pressure gets up, you can't throttle it. It has, it'll, it'll only idle at low oil pressure until the oil pressure gets up. Is that, no, you, no, you can go ahead and you can throttle it up. It just, it just doesn't advance the injection. It's just basically standard injection until it reaches a certain RPM. And then it, it's, it starts the injection, it, it, it advances it, it starts it earlier than what it normally would.
this would be normal injection would start at 28 degrees before top dead center but uh i mean you're you're only oscillating that maybe one or two degrees right just just a very little right here yeah less than a half a degree to change the timing a little bit yeah. maybe a half a degree degree i don't know i get what you're saying Well, what's the uh, the overall we're going to do here? You're just going to keep putting along here and maybe... Well, I don't know. I think I'm going to clean everything up and I'm going to time everything back, get it good and clean. And I'm not so sure. See, I don't, I don't have the equipment to uh, test everything. There's a fixture that you can use to check the opening pressure of the diverter valve, the delivery valve this spring and if that's you use it you use the same pump as you would use for an injector but you would run the line to a, a little um, what we'll call it um, fixture fixture that has this spring diverter deli I'm gonna keep calling it a diverter valve it's a delivery valve installed in it you got a pressure gauge you pump it up and that spring is supposed to hold pressure until it reaches a certain point and then it it'll relieve pressure it'll lift this up and let the pressure so off. technically technically where that thing went where did the thing it goes in the top of this okay it goes right down top so of it. technically if we had those those threads right there on the end of a hydraulic line and a hand pump and a gauge, it's just a bypass. That's basically all it is, is a bypass. So if we had those threads, then we could put, we could put this mechanism with the spring in there and test the spring on uh, it come out. That's the little valve in there. I don't know if you guys can see that. And uh, test the spring load on that. Because I'm going to kind of lay it all there, right back down there. According to this spring. Uh, it sits right on top of this. Yeah, it, this goes on here like this. The spring goes on that. Mm -hmm. And then the spring slips over a little shaft that's up in here. Mm -hmm. And that, and when you once this is tightened down, is there any adjustment to that, or do you have to put shims in it? What you do, you you get different thicknesses of these. Oh wow! This is the spring guide, and this measurement off of this shoulder here where my fingernail is behind, and this this shoulder here where my fingernail is up against. So the thicker that is, the more pressure it puts and out. More pressure, it, it's putting more tension on the spring. Well. So them them uh, Cummins boys, they all they all change their springs, and some of the other pumps. That's how they build horsepower. Is they change the spring, or they adjust the spring, and you, you just build more pressure. Yeah. But I don't have that fixture to check that. Yeah. Um, same way. Um, th same thing with. Uh, Checking the fuel injectors. I don't have. I don't have that tester. I wish I did. But that one we seen at the junkyard. Would it? Yeah, that's what that was for. Was to, in, to check injectors. But it could be a. It fuel. could be adapted for this, can it? Oh, you sure it could. You'd either have to make or find the fixture that this delivery valve goes in to check that, and then go by the book specifications on what. That is supposed to open at, um, but I don't have that. The best I can do is just clean everything up, retime everything, and you know, and put it back together and retime it, and put it back on there and see what happens. But I'm not so sure that somebody hasn't, for lack of a better word, fooled around with this pump because the governor housing. This is where the manual fuel pump goes. It's driven off this shaft. There was a, I don't know 
know whether it's still here or not, but there was a, you know, this right here. This was the bottom screw that went in here. And it's supposed to have a piece of wire with a lead seal going through one of these holes here. And that seals it, one, makes it obvious whether somebody's been in here fooling around with any adjustments or anything. Um, this wire was not going through anything. The seal appears to be still. The only thing that wire went through was this bolt. It did not come over here and go through these. It looks like somebody, someone took a, the wire, ran it back through there and just twisted it. Anyway, that's one, one thing that makes me believe that somebody has tampered with it. The top cover on the governor housing, it, didn't, it wasn't sealed with a lead seal. Uh, this control, where you at? Right here. The control unit goes in here like this. And this rod here comes through here and goes goes here. This did not have a lead seal on it. Uh, so there's a lot of things you can adjust right in here. These are the governor springs over here on the back of the pump. Uh, this is called the droop screw right here. Uh, you can change that adjustment and screw things up on it. These screws right here, this is idle adjustment and this one is maximum RPM, what they call high, high idle. I can't loosen those with my fingers, but if you screw these caps off these, these have a threaded. Well, I can actually see inside the rods. The This rod, you can see. It's it goes, coming through right there. It comes there. through there, and it's just basically pushing on something. Yeah. Yeah. So they could, they could have this adjusted to where uh, it's not even trying to idle. It's letting this, it lets this, I'm gonna lose that little thing right there if I'm not careful. When you let off the throttle, it lets that drop below that hole and that releases the fuel that becomes compressed above this. And that would, that would not let it idle. Here's one point I want to make on this, and, it, and to me, I haven't gotten this in my mind, how this totally works like it does. Uh, what did I do with the little control unit? Uh, Stuck it back in there. Yeah. Okay, this goes back in that with the arm down. To throttle up, the rod does this. It turns in a counterclockwise rotation. Okay, let me get this turn 90 degrees from that. Okay, this goes in here. Okay, I see. I see how it's what it's doing now. For some reason, yeah, the well, the little spot wells on this aren't broken, so that that's still good. These sometimes break, and this little lever here on the side just goes back and forth without this doing anything. So. Basically what it's doing, this is in, this would be like something like idle mode. Idle mode here, it's covering this port right here. 
but this is going up and down. And as you advance the throttle, the lever turns counterclockwise, pushes this up, and the fuel can't get out of there. It's, it has to be. It has to go out through the delivery valve and then out to one of these lines to an injector. And when you shut the engine off, uh, the throttle lever, not the throttle lever, but the, the lever right here, when you pull back on the shutoff lever, it pulls back on this clockwise brings this down below below that hole right there and it stops because it can't build pressure. You can't build pressure. Um, that's basically it in a nutshell. Uh, here's another thing about this thing too and I guess they designed it this way. I, I'm not real sure but this goes on here like this you have a chamfer on this uh -huh. you have a chamfer in here but look how much play you have oh wow and I think they did that because there's a spring on here this spring here goes on here it has to be compressed and there's two little keepers right here just like keepers not just like but the same principle as the keepers on a valve yeah in an engine they go down in here in this this groove right here yeah just like a valve okay that keeps that in there keeps it compressed and once they're on there actually the spring is just pulling the two chamfers together um, so is it acting like a valve? And it's letting it, no, it's not acting like, well, yes, it's, 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 it's going up and down like a valve. But I'm talking, is this like uh, sealing off something like a seat in a valve? Oh, no, uh-uh. Okay. Well, since this it is so to, precise. You have oil from the engine on this side. On this side, you've got fuel from the tank. Yeah, uh, well, here's what I'm, my thinking just i might be wrong uh, since this is so pro precise going in and out of that head right there does it not need a little bit of relief or it would bend it you know like this well that's what i'm thinking that's what i'm thinking is they, they didn't want that to be rigid uh they wanted to be able to flow a little bit uh -huh. all that's holding in there just a spring and holds it down just on that bevel in there champ or whatever you want to call it where the two meet they didn't want that hole to be a precise fit so that this could have just a little bit because actually the cam's turning so is the cam actually pushing this cup it's pushing that spring in that this plunger this oh so cup. the the uh roller actually the this ro is riding here uh-huh and this is down in there like that. Yeah, I see. This little button, this little button goes on here too, on the end of that, right here like this. And then you have another retainer for the button that holds it in. And that goes down in here and makes contact with that. Okay. And that's basically that's basically how it works. So I, I really don't know of anything to do. Just since I don't have uh, the necessary setup to check everything for pressure and everything, um, is just to clean it up, retime everything, put it back together, and time it as I put it together, and put it back on the truck and try it. Right, right. And, if, and if it still doesn't work, um, they say these springs right here, if they get weak, um, the governor doesn't work like it's supposed to. And if somebody's gone in here and they've changed the adjustment around, 
which it, they went in, they, somebody's been into the pump, but whether or not they changed any adjustments on it, I don't know, because I have no way of checking to see. Um, that's the $64 question, I guess. Well, worst case scenario, we got a couple pumps located, so worst case, or we go out there and get one of those inline sixes off of one of those inline six pumps off of those other motors. That's about what it boils down to. Yep, we'll go get one of those pumps off the other motors, and, and uh, we could run into problems with with those because they they have sat for a, probably as many or more years than what this one has. Mm -hmm. Varnish is built up in them. They're they're inline pumps, whereas you got a you have a spring on each plunger. Mm -hmm. If it's a six cylinder, you got six springs. A lot of times these will push up when they can't. They got six lobes in there on one cam. These are sitting down here, just like so. And a lot of times when that lobe pushes that up, these these uh, plungers will stick and this one will come down. You have to take a screwdriver and stick it in here and hit the screwdriver with a hammer and break them loose. Keep spraying brake cleaner or whatever you can up in there to... Yeah, to they're clean. actually a little easier to work on too. I think they are. All right, well... This type pump is... Um, it's a different design than... What uh, the inline pumps are, whether it's a better design or, or whether the inline pump is a better design, I, I really don't know. I don't, but they all can give problems when they have sat for years and, yep. and haven't been run. So I don't know. Well, all right. So that's, uh, that's the down and dirty of where we're at on the truck. So... We're going to take some time this afternoon and reorganize and get the truck pulled forward again. Uh, if you guys have been carrying it, keeping along, following along, there's the radiator we pulled off. We're probably going to have to do a little something. The to, top tank is uh, separated or something. A little bit of soldering going to go on there. Um, but, uh, yeah, we've got to get that out. And there's a truck bed back there. Got to get that out. And we're going to pull that kind of up here into this area right here. Um, or, I don't know, we may do something with it. We got to do something with that tow motor for sure to get to the bed. And I thought of something I, I should have mentioned in, while we were filming at this pump that I checked that I failed to mention. Inside here... There's a friction, friction clutch, friction, mm. friction drive that drives this governor shaft. This um, uh, this spider right here that the weights are are on that are pinned on. Down on behind the waist, there's a spider in there. I'd have to take it off for you to see it. Is it a brown recluse or a black widow? I would say it's uh, probably um, just an old house spider. Nothing special about it. But anyway, uh, I have had this out, and I looked at it, and you can see where that spider has turned on this um uh, Oh, well, I called it a spider. This is the spider that the weight's on. I can't think what they call those discs, but they have fingers all around them. You can see where it's been turning on that spider. It, it's, it's wear marks on it. Mm -hmm. Well, I tried to tighten this nut right here. It's, it was staked in place right here. And I unstaked it, took a socket, and made me a little spanner like a spanner nut yeah and try tightening that a little bit more i can't tighten it any tighter someone that probably has probably put red loctite or something on this thing 
the permanent type. Because mm -hmm. I actually put a little heat on this from a porch just for a few seconds to warm it up a little, see if I could loosen the whatever they put on there. I can't back it off and I can't tighten it. It's just there. This has been tightened once because you can see here and over here where this was staked here and here. And they unstaked it and they tightened it maybe a, not even a quarter of a turn, maybe an eighth. It was, The notches were here and here. But they turned it an eighth of a turn and then restaked it where it's at. And I think they, when they put some thread um, some red locker on it. Uh, to me, the book, I did find in the book where it says this, this right here, you're supposed to tighten this until you, it, it takes from two and a half to three and a, three and a half pounds inch, or I say inch pounds of torque to make that clutch slip. Well, to me, I didn't, you have to put a thin wrench right in here to turn that while you hold that shaft. And the wrench is only out to about right here. And pulling on the wrench right here, it takes considerably more than two and a half to three and a half inch pounds to make that clutch slip. But that's not to say once oil gets in here, everything gets hot. And this, this shaft is trying to drive this mechanical fuel pump over here, build 40 pounds of pressure on it, that may start slipping. And that may be our, one of our problems. Uh, that's just food for thought <laughs> from uh, someone that's, that's uh, not really educated in anything. <laughs> all right so well we're gonna get to work see what we can do we're gonna try to mess with that forklift and then run in a while uh he says it's got an intake leak possible intake leak and you got to have good vacuum to pull the uh the propane uh to get the propane to flow through it so yeah, it'd be all right if uh, we could get the little thing just up and running. We'd spin it around and hook to that bed right there and take it out. But we're not, we're hey, we, we're going to work on it. And uh, worst case scenario, we'll, I'll run to the house, get my roll back, and we'll take it down to the barn or something. We was kind of hoping to get it started and park it over here. And uh, just kind of leave it in here for use but yeah we're going to uh, the good old bed may put that on the uh eventually put that on the all i can afford forward because it doesn't have it doesn't have any rot right here like mine does so we're gonna we got other things to do that's probably a long ways down the road so give y'all a little bit this Thursday. We didn't do a whole lot of work work, but we did some instruction. So we're gonna play with this thing and see what we can do. Call me any chance you get. Three <laughs> rings. Yeah, he wants three rings on that thing right there and he'll know it's y'all, <laughs> Call him. All right, here we go. Okay, we're just about done here for the day on Thursday with Uncle Joe and the Big 61. Um, yeah, we got the Bobcat out and and you see that's pulled towards the front. We actually got that where we can jump the starter a little bit. The key switch don't work. That should have been a will it start video because it took us a little while to get it started. Fresh propane and some extra wires and a battery that won't hold charge and a jumper box and some ether and a spring on the uh, throttle pedal. And uh, she started up now. She starts. We just have to jump it off the starter. But uh, yeah, we got that out. And we also got the bed out and took out there. I'm going to take that to my place. And uh, that's Uncle Ben. I mean, uh, Ben and Uncle Joe. That's Joe's son. 
So you can tell we got this, uh, we got this here truck pulled up and we uh, did a little bit of sweeping and cleaning so the guy can get in here and fix this door. And then we'll, re we'll push the truck probably back here real close to the door. And uh, that way when we run it, the exhaust goes out. But uh, yeah, I'll show you a picture of the different uh, a spider we found. Be in here yeah that's a big nope uh it come out of there it was everywhere i mean they're all on this truck a bunch of fiddlers brown recluses there was some up in there but uh anyway we got her swept up and i think he's got some bug spray he's gonna just kind of lay around on the ground spray around just kind of help the situation out here and we moved a bunch of stuff, cleaned a bunch of stuff, and he's still over there ciphering on the, the pump with me. And uh, no, we, we got the big exhaust pipe that was hooked in that hole. Took it off, set it over there because that door's gonna be gone sometime. The guy said the door would be ready in three weeks and today is three weeks. So we're just waiting for him to call and say he's ready to do it. So. Not a whole lot of Mac stuff, but we did pull it forward and uh, we're getting closer to heading out that door. Just wanna give y'all a heads up of where we're at. Uh, possibly he'll have the pump put back together next week. Uh, if not sooner, if it is, I'll swing by over here. We'll do another video uh, to kind of catch y'all up. But uh, yeah, we're... Uh, headed in the right direction. So, from Barkley at Bro's Garage, I'm fixing stuff. Till next time, y'all like and share. I tell everybody about it. I know uh, I'm sharing it on Facebook and I'm sharing it on Instagram and uh, had a lot of people hit me up on Instagram, people want to sell parts and buy parts. And so if you see something in the videos that you're interested in, um, I hit me up. I can all, all I can do is say no because he's he's focusing on this project right here. But like I think pretty much these three back here are gone now. Uh, I think he said he's gonna keep that one and he's gonna keep the D21, but he's not married to it. Now he's got several things here that he's wanting to get rid of. So if y'all see anything, uh, hit me up. We'll. Uh, next Thursday with Joe, Uncle Joe, and the B61 Mac. And y'all come back here.